Okay, we are live. Cool, we are live on both YouTube and Instagram at the same time. Okay. Um, all right, uh, office hours. It is time for October voiceover office hours. Um, so if you have questions about voiceover, go ahead and put them into the chat, and I will do my absolute best to... Uh, answer those questions and actually I got to bring this up I just realized excuse me that for some reason um, twitch not twitch streamlabs is not telling anyone I'm gonna mute this for myself all right so I have that all right cool so if you have questions go ahead and put them into the chat I will do my best to answer them in the meantime uh, let us look up. I had some questions that people were interested in that they had asked. All right, bringing that up. Where do we have here? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, this is a really good question. I've seen this. Um, I've, I've seen this question a couple of times. Let me bring this over here so I can see it. Okay. At any rate, uh, the question, I can find it here, comes from uh, Ethan Shirley of St. Louis, Missouri. I know money is always a touchy subject. Yes, it can be. And I'm not asking you how much you make per book. But how do I know when I'm ready to raise my rates? I've taken some lower paying gigs to get myself started but I know I can't build a career on them and I really want to do this full time. That's a really, really good question. Excuse me while I have some of my genuine Hank's Gourmet Wishniak Black Cherry Soda. It's very tasty. Um, that's a really, that is a really good question. How do you know when it's time to raise your rates? Um, I, I don't know if there's an exact answer to that question. I don't know if there's a specific, yes, now is the time. I know you're not going to start off at $200 per finished hour, for example. Um, just because that's what you get after you've been doing this for a while. Um, but you also don't want to stick around doing $80 per finished hour forever. Um, because it's not terribly sustainable, especially as you get better at it, you should be commanding a higher rate. Um, I will say that it is, once you've locked in a rate with someone, really difficult to ask for a raise. Really, really difficult. Um, I look at it like if someone took a risk on me at the beginning of my career... Um, if they took a risk on me at the beginning of their career, uh, they're, you know, they, they paid me whatever the rate was that I had asked for. And I feel like they're, for me anyways, they're kind of locked into that rate. I don't want to, I mean, it, because hopefully I started asking for a, a, a reasonable rate. I don't even know why I have these on. Nope. Oh, sorry. I don't even need that on. Um, I don't, so yeah, I look at it like. Yeah, I might still be doing books for less expensive, for a lower rate than I would for, say, a brand new client, but 
these are folks that helped me get me on my feet when I first started or wherever I was in my career. The, they, they, they took a risk in me in that moment. So uh, that's the cost. The cost is that I don't charge them a higher rate. Um, I've had people who have voluntarily started paying me higher rates as we've moved forward, but it's never been at my urging. Um, now, if it's been years, depending on who it is, but if it's been years since we last worked together, then yeah, I might not want to go back to that $80 per finished hour rate, but I'll try to find, you know, and that's, we'll try to find something, but um, it's tough to ask for a raise as you're working with someone. Um, when is a time? I don't know. If you're narrating consistently, let's just say audiobooks. Let's just say audiobooks, for example. One way to find out is to ask people who have narrated about the same... I'm not going to say the same number of books. Because I don't think that's the same thing. I don't think that's a fair measurement because the books are at different lengths. I've done plenty of books that are like two hours long. Is that the same as narrating a book that's 12 hours long? No, definitely not. Completely different kind of project. Um, so my vote would be first, if people are comfortable talking to you, finding a coach or finding, not even a coach, finding someone, um, um, a colleague, a contemporary, someone who's done 12 hours, there's done 10 books, and maybe each of those books is about eight hours long, so 10 times eight, you've done about 80 hours of narration. Maybe you ask them, hey, just out of curiosity, what are you charging now? Um, that might be one way, but like uh, the original question, um, money can be a touchy subject, and not everyone wants to um, wants to share the number that they have. I, I'm not sure why. It's not like it's a huge secret um, and it's not like we're doing terribly complicated things where our pricing internal pricing algorithm is a little proprietary and we don't want people to know how much we're getting for say the parts for things if we had to make things um, the other thing is I guess look at about every 10 books or so 10 to 15 books I'm trying to think, so, you know what, I'm going to spill the tea because I just, I even just said it. Um, so when I started, in addition to doing some royalty share, and I did have some extraordinarily low paying books, uh, $40 per finished hour, which is way below a rate that anyone should be accepting. Um, the person I was narrating for was very nice. They were professional. They always paid their invoice on time. So I have a lot to be thankful for for that. Um, and when I did ask, at a certain point, I just basically said, hey, I need to charge you more. I can't do it at this rate anymore. And they said, sorry, it's not in the budget. And I said, that's fine. We parted on very good terms, I feel. And if their budget ever changes, then yeah, I would probably go back and work for them. I don't think they'd be able to match what I'm doing now. But anyway, so... But when I really started doing the audiobooks, I was doing uh, charging $80 per finished hour for the first, say, dozen or so, give or take. I don't remember exactly when my rates changed. I could go into ACX and look. I'm just not going to do that right now. Um, but I started with that. And now I am charging... Now my rate, my going rate is $215 per finished hour, which is the... Uh, union scale rate or just above the union scale rate um and i've done i think around let's call it around 85 books i think is what it is i might be wrong so um yeah i don't even know how to do that math to figure that out i don't even know how to do that math to figure that out um 80 bucks let's just figure this out so 215 minus 80 is a hundred and thirty-five uh, dollar difference divided by call it eighty-five books. So is that right? Yeah, dollar fifty-eight. So I guess 
every time I did a book, if on average you raise your rate by a dollar fifty eight, <laughs> um, that doesn't do you much good. But if it's, if it's just say dollar fifty, just call it a buck fifty. Um, divided by one point five ten. So yeah, you know what? Every every ten books, you will be able to go up about ten. Uh, Now, nah, call it every 15. About every 15 books, you can raise your rate about $10. Thereabouts. I think that's a fair way to say that. Once you've done 15 books, if you were doing 80, you should now be able to charge 90. Once you're at 30, you should be able to charge 100. This is sounding about right, I think. Memory serves. So as you go, you can slowly... Now, I don't know if that scale is 100% accurate, because I think at some point you might make a big jump. You might go from 100 to 150 pretty quickly. I don't know. It depends who you're narrating for. Um... The same could be said with all your other voiceover rates. You should start off by charging a fair rate to your or charging a fair rate that values your time. It might be at the lower end of the voiceover scale when you look at things, but it should still be a completely fair, honest rate. But it's also completely reasonable as to when you up your rates. And when that happens, I don't know. I really think it's going to be different for everyone. I think it depends on how de how in demand you are. If you are constantly booked, it's probably time to look at raising your rates for new clients. Again, I don't believe in hitting existing clients with higher rates just because you're in demand. Because they are paying you for where you are in your career right now. And because of the work you did for them, it allowed you to get experience to move on to your next thing. And if you're charging that client more because they're new, that's fine. But your previous clients helped get you there. So if you want to say you're still discounting your rate to them, that's fine. But that discount is the price that you are going to pay as the talent for having them having taken a chance on you when you started your career. I think that's the fair way to look at that. Um, when you invoice, you should absolutely, for everyone, put the discount there, regardless of what you negotiated. So, for example, um, if my, I don't have my numbers in front of me right now, but let's just say for the sake of argument that right now my session fee charges $300. That's the amount of money it takes for me to record, to turn on the microphone, go, you know, go in the booth, record your whatever narration for up to, you know, whatever the finished audio ends up being five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. Um, not audiobook rate. Um, that's the amount of money it costs for me just to do that. And you get your revisions and all the other stuff with that. But let's just say that as I'm working with this client, and we're negotiating and I get that down to, or they get it down to say, we agree that um, 250 or $230, 200 and whatever. Let's just say $230 is the amount that we agreed to based on what their budget is. Now I could say, no, this is my rate and I could hold fast. Okay, but, and there's a lot of things, a lot of inputs that go into making that decision. But the other thing to look at is like 230 versus 300. And is this going to make or break me? Is me giving a $70 discount or a $50 discount or whatever, is this going to make or break me? Probably not. I, You know, that extra 50 bucks is like, yeah, it's nice. But is that going to really make my year? Is that going to cover my rent? No. The 250 will. Or it will go towards that. So... Again, there's a lot of things that go into that calculus, and it's fine, whatever it is for you. But what I would do then is, I'm doing the math because I, again, can't do math in my head like that. So 83%. So that's a 17% discount on, on my services. So when I send out my invoice for that project, I charge them, the, they say it's $250. I'll charge them the $250 in the invoice like we agreed to. But next to that, I do put in there that there was a 17% discount. 
because I do want them to understand the value of what it is that they got. So that way they understand, yes, I offered you a discount. That way they're not, well, that's your standard rate. No, it's not. I, I did this for you. And I think that's just important. So that way it's all the way across the board. Um, it, uh, across the board, it's above board rather. It is, uh, it's transparent and it's in writing. Not that I've had an issue ever with it, but I've, if I, listen, I've watched enough people's court to know and Judge Judy to know that you need all this stuff in writing and the more that's documented, the better, because then it becomes, if it ever does become an issue, you've got it in writing on your side. Um, but the same thing with raising your rates there. As you move forward, you should be raising your rates. Um, I, it's a long-winded way to get around of how, when do you do it. It's different for everybody. If you're 20 books in, you should not be charging $80 per finished hour. I'll tell you that much. What should you be charging? I don't know. Are you worth 100 Are you worth 125 Are you worth 150 I don't know. Maybe you're doing super quality work. Again, if it's doing super quality work, then yeah, maybe you should be worth 150 bucks per finished hour at that point. Maybe not. I don't know. It's what the it's it's also what the um it's what the market will bear. It's what the people who would hire you, who your potential clients, it's what they're able to afford. And I will say as you charge more in audiobooks specifically, um you will start to see fewer projects coming your way. Uh, or at least available to you uh, for two reasons. One, not all independent authors have it in their budget to pay $200 per finished hour. They just don't. It's If you're talking about a 10-hour book, that's $2,000 out of pocket. they got to sell a lot of audiobooks to make that money back. And I hope that they do. Um, so, But independent authors may not have that in the budget. So that might, you might be losing some of your potential clients because of that. Um, the other thing too is that those jobs are going to be competing. There's going to be a lot of competition for that. Whether that person who's competing with you is, whether they should be competing at that level is a completely different story. But my guess is that, like if I, whenever I've gone on to ACX recently to look at things, I'm looking at the higher rate jobs. So, not to say that oh you got to compete against me, and I don't mean that. Like, I'm sure you, I'm sure you could be able to beat me. You'd be just as there's plenty. There's lots. There's tons of people who are way better than me, um, but it does mean that, that you would then be auditioning against people who have done dozens upon dozens upon dozens, if not hundreds, of audiobooks. So there's an experience differential there that you would have to try to overcome. So it becomes, you know, you're getting paid more, but you're not necessarily going to have as many projects at your disposal. Um, I hope that kind of answers the question in a roundabout way. Um, Cool. That's it for office hours this October. Um, keep an eye on my social channels to see when we're doing uh, the next office hours. And everybody have...